and welcome to the AEW Dynamite Review. We are the Dadly Boys of What Culture. I'm Adam Wilborn, joined by Michael Hamlet and Michael Sidgwick here to review everything that happened on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube, <sighs> where we do daily wrestling podcasts where we not only review AEW Dynamite, but also AEW Collision, Raw, SmackDown, the show formerly known as NXT 2.0. Oh! Pay-per-views, premium live events. We have interviews, roundtable discussions, and a roundup of the week complete. Everybody get quiz, of course, on WrestleCulture. As I said, they're joined by Hamlet and Sidgwick to review last night's Dynamite. Sidge, what did you make of the show? Uh, my socks are still on. <laughs> <laughs> my cock hasn't been ripped off. It was cold. It was probably a bit better than I expected. Yeah. I didn't expect much at all. Uh, I... It, like next week looks great. Yeah, so and that was before the storm. Yeah, it was all very much. Well, next week's going to be good, so get on the hook for that. Very carny, in a way. I thought it's not great for the New Orleans fans. Like they went, they attended a show in good faith. It's always that AEW poster, isn't it? The whole roster hoping to get the full Dynamite experience, and then we're basically told over two hours that next week's crowd. In Arizona, we're going to get the full Dynamite experience. Thanks for setting that up. Yeah, they got Jeff Hardy, they got RVD. It's you can't do it every week. You can't man. do it every week. You can't. Yeah, like I don't think it's 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 not fair to expect like shows like next week's every week's. But unfortunately, this week's I would say was as advertised. Unfortunately, yeah. Like what this like what this promised, it delivered. Yeah. But it just promised so little in the first place. Yeah, I think the Rob Van Dam thing was nice. Obviously, making that hardcore match just added to it. Obviously. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you got to see Moxley versus Jeff Hardy with the more ear stuff. It's a bit of knockabout. Yeah. Forgotten about ear stuff. Lightweight. Yeah. Just eminently missable. Should have, like, put a skewer through his ear. There's some talking points. This is not going to be a dull podcast, at least I hope not. Like, <laughs> there's some talking points. This is some stuff I want to bury. Maybe some stuff I want to tentatively put over. But did anyone do cartwheels at this? Nah, like, I'd... you know what I mean? Did anyone mm. leave this dynamite, and I'm sick of the word, with the feeling mm. restored or, like, any of the old energy, vibe, heat, flair? There's just none of it. It's personified beforehand. I, when I was doing the, the notes for the preview yesterday, I looked on the AEW tweet where it's like, coming up tonight on Dynamite, we've got da 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 And the, like, t top two tweets that I saw in response, one was like, can't wait, Jeff Hardy in action, and I get to see Rob Van Dam, and I think they were going to the show maybe, mm. or they were just looking forward to watching it on telly. I was this from uh, 14 years ago in TNA. <laughs> <laughs> the one underneath said, looks, looks, yeah, basically like you said, definitely skippable, probably DVR it and watch it a few days later. I mean, half of this was a 14-year-old TNA show, <laughs> <laughs> in vibe, and like, in personnel. Or like a, what, like a 20, what are we now, 2024? Like a 24... 23-year-old WWE show as well. Like a lot of these guys that like Jeff Hardy and Rob Van Dam. Was it Invasion 2001? They had their first match Aye. against each other. Like, how, And they're having matches here that are very similar in tone to why people wanted that dream match in the first place. It's and we got an invasion on this show, technically. Yeah. I, again, I think there's positives. I, I don't... We talked on a... Go on generally, because I just think if you get into the nitty-gritty on this one, there's not really much to dig mm. into. But on the preview yesterday... I, I try to make the point that I don't have a problem with AEW taking like a long time to reverse course. I don't. You do it overnight, that'll be transparent and it'll yes. be obvious and it'll be. You, can't, you simply it. can't do it. You can't do it. And I, I, the feeling is an interesting one because they've have they kind of like accepted that without branding it outright. Tony Khan's probably tweeted about the feeling or the it's is it just a fan term that or of AEW? Sort Some of, of the wrestlers that? have taken it on. It's, I know Daniel Garcia has on Twitter. It's a bit, um, it's not risky, but it's a little bit like, you made the point that I thought was strong about the Seth Rollins, put your title over to the hilt. But then if you bury the other one, you sort of drawing people's attention back to that. Yeah. Just stick to your title. Whenever, and it's like, obviously WWE are always the fallback example, but others have done it. Like WCW where the big boys play, or WWF like the new generation. That new generation was a period that was completely on its ass. Mm. But you wouldn't know it from that marketing campaign. It wasn't like, the new generation, it's going to be as good as the rest of you used to like. It was almost like, <laughs> that was trash. Like, the new generation is here and it's better than ever. Like, you kind of, you have to be careful how much you inadvertently bury a bit you didn't like if you're putting over mm. the, the new one. Yeah, to bring back an old bit, they are basically saying, AEW used to suck and now it don't <laughs> suck. Anymore. That's, the, that's the subtext of Restore the Feeling. Yeah. Rankings are back. Swerve, number one. Hangman, page two. Copeland, 
Moxley, Roderick Strong for the men's champions, Diona Perazzo, Thunder Rose, Hikaru Shida, Sky Blue, Mariah May. So, like we mentioned, yeah, yeah. sneaking up there with the that. idea of Mariah May going up in the rankings and then Tony Storm eventually realizing this and the commentary team drawing those connections should be quite a fun device. And understandably, Sting and Darby Allen, top of the tag team contenders. Yeah. As it's they have been for the past four years. <laughs> <laughs> Three years at this point? Yeah, the rank has never stopped for them to. No. Like they... Well, it did, and that was the point. Anyway, <laughs> let's get straight into this. Yes, John Moxley versus Jeff Hardy opened. Uh, we see the CMLL lads, uh, Mystico, Volador Jr., Mascara Dorada, and I meant to look up how you say this bloke's name, and I've completely forgotten. I will do it before the collision preview tomorrow. Hechi Chiro? I don't know. I apologize I'm for that. I'm sorry. I'm pig ignorant. He's fighting Brian Danielson. And I think you can infer and should that that match is going to kick ass and oh, he yeah. kicks ass because the like, submission a, purists, yeah, there's um, on like the boards and X in the comment sections are literally purring over this one. Mm. It's it, there's again like not to sort of immediately push back on bad faith actors before they've even acted, mm. but that booking is enough for you to get the gist. They're like this must be a really big deal, and I should need to tune in and watch it. Yeah, it's infer things. That's if you've got a brain, you can infer things. Yeah, it's AEW serving the audience. It should. I didn't need this. Well, we'll get to it, but the tattoo stuff. So I inferred it last week. Yeah, <laughs> that, that felt like a, a, a direct rebuttal of Bully Ray, who got put down last week when he was like, "Where's the story?" And people were like, "She literally said we got these. Look at your leg. We got these tattoos together." What you don't, do you, you don't get matching tattoos with like an acquaintance, <laughs> <laughs> like someone like a general well wisher. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's get a matching tattoo then. Like what the? F anyway, is that what he did? I missed that one. Did he say mm, that? I, it's I, a weird one to pick up. Well, it's not if you're a grifter. <laughs> You'll pick on anything you can. Uh, so, yeah, Mox Hardy started. Uh, Mox immediately went for the hole in, in Hardy's ear. We'll get back to that. Uh, they brawl to the outside whilst Excalibur says, yeah, I think the rules are going to be kind of relaxed in this one. Uh, Hardy gets taken out with a dive, clothesline over the uh, guardrail. Uh, Moxley eventually gets reversed on the outside and sent into the laps of the CMLL stars. Um Flips, flips him off and then gets back in there as uh, Hardy tries to launch off the steps but gets caught with a big forearm to take us to break. Um, during the break, uh, Moxley grabbed Excalibur's pen and it, put it through Hardy's ear. Yeah. Um, Hardy uh, posts Moxley when we come back. Manhattan drop and a, a low leg drop combo gets a near fall. Uh, Moxley ex explodes back to his feet. Hammer and Alvinville elbows and a stalling pile driver gets him a two count. Hardy counters a gotch pile driver on the apron into a twist of fate. It's a whisper in the wind. Uh, corner drop kick, but takes too long for the swanton bomb. Uh, Moxley cuts him off. Big back rake, superplex. Hardy goes for another twist of fate. Moxley spins, spins into a cutter, uh, but Hardy counters the paradigm shift for that split lead pin attempt, which is really good close to there. Yeah, it was really good as a near fall there. Um, he hits another twist of fate. Again, misses the swan on there, and Moxley gets in with the rear naked choke. Let's talk match, and then we'll we'll talk fallout afterwards. I Kind of the theme of the night where I went in thinking, ugh, 2000 fans, very trickly wrestlers, mm. some really old guys as well. This doesn't feel cutting edge remotely, and it feels cold. Um, this was, yeah, theme of the night because I thought this was better than I expected. Facetious idea, because it's never going to happen. Jeff Hardy, whenever he has a singles match, right, have him open the show every time, but have him work a five minute dark match beforehand <laughs> because when he warms up, yeah, yeah. he's not, not dynamic. Yeah. And he's got this weird thing in his twilight years, Jeff Hardy, where it's like, you can never tell if he's selling or if his body is just in anguish. <laughs> yeah. We had that live. Do you remember that? It's remember like, I just don't know. a spot where he fell off the post. And we were like, was that a spot or is he just falling off? Because he's crumpled his body up. And we're like, well, the heels have got to take advantage. But yeah. we don't know without the commentators kind of the telling claimed, us. The claimed it was deliberate. it was such deliberate. a chaotic fall. In which, like, <laughs> arms and legs went everywhere. You're like, is he, is he all right? <laughs> but like the last five minutes here, yeah. he was trading those reversals. Like he got that like incredible near fall. Mm. He didn't feel like he was moving through treacle at all. He looked a bit limber, a bit dynamic. Um, I, I thought this was a better match than I thought it was going to be. And I'll tell you what I really liked about it as well. I'll tell you what, though, the heat felt like it went on forever. You didn't get that intoxicating rush of the dynamite opener um, at all. That heat spot went on. Uh, the sequence went on for a while. I really liked how it just lent the match an improvised feel that the ma uh, the, the pen... Come here. Yeah, the pen was just like... You didn't go under the ring and went, 
I have stashed a pen yeah. <laughs> because I know you've got like in a big hole in your ear. It was like this improvised. Oh, hang on, I'll have a bit of that. Yeah. Like a little bit more of that in my wrestling generally would not go amiss mm. at all. Obviously, it was heavily indebted to the Orton, Jeff Hardy. Ugh. So it wasn't that creative a story beat, but the way they arrived at it was really yeah. quite good. I was just shocked at how much he moved. I it, like I, to be honest, I felt the same about this as I did about um, Adam Copeland and Minoru Suzuki. And the matches are sort of similar. This was absolutely a five years ago WrestleMania weekend. What those two? He's wrestling him. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's going to be a 2024 staple because it's. One I hope the, not because it's 2017 asked. But the matches are not bad. They're, they're never gonna. They've got a low ceiling, I think. But so you're saying it's lacking razzmatazz. Lacking in the razzmatazz. Not exactly razzmatazz out the eight itself. No. <laughs> but they're not going to be bad either because no. it's always going to be at least one, it's kind of like in the main event as well, at least one veteran, at least a wrestler that you think, oh, I never would have imagined him fighting him. So you get a little bit of that novelty. It's, it's, all, not, it's lots of novelty in AEW these days, though, isn't it? But it maybe like... Maybe now's the time to do it when they're not on the, the big stretch to the pay-per-view. Mm. Novelty... That is something to fill the mid card and pad the rankings is better than dark wins and dark and dark yes. elevation wins. If you're gonna do it, yeah. I'd rather see I'd rather see Moxley pick up a win in something that was a bit novelty and weird than having to like like have six matches, six more matches against the Shane Taylor lot or whatever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like there's ways you have to get them up the I rankings. think it's a happier medium that can be struck, but I'll use an example later on in the review. Uh so post match, Moxley offers a handshake and uh, Hardy flips him off. Um it's weird watching Mox just go, huh? <laughs> well, kick his ass. Welcome to the kiss my ass dimension, Mark. <laughs> I also like the way he sort of went, mm. <laughs> um, So he's posted the crowd. He's talking a little trash uh, to the CMLL lot. Uh, so Mr. goes up not having this. He jumps the railing. They all follow him. He tries fighting them off, does Mox. The numbers game catches up to him. He gets beaten down. Excalibur reminds us that the BCC aren't there. Um, Referees and security, get out of the way. We kind of kick the crap out. We're invading. Uh, but uh, Daniels, Mano uh, Matt Seidel, uh, Daddy Magic, Cool Hand Ange come in and chase them all off. What did you think of that? Fun Gallus. Fun Gallus? <laughs> <laughs> I really like this. Um, it was notable that like CMLL is like the hipster league du jour, where it's, I was going to say widely, not widely, but it's recognized among the uber hipsters mm. who've really got the time and the inclination to seek out everything. Like that small crop, obviously in Mexico, mm -hmm. it's booming. It's yeah. huge. They are doing like Arena Mexico sellouts like constantly. They are, CMLL isn't a boom. I'm talking about our perspective from like the English speaking North American yeah. slash UK fans who predominantly are on X, right? The real hardcore of those accounts are like insistent and you know it's backed up by the fact that it's booming in mexico that mm. cmll is the best hottest acclaimed non-wwe league right now mm. it does not on the evidence of this reaction and maybe the online buzz carry quite the same cachet as something like new japan did when that promotion occupied that sort of stratosphere in what virtually all of the 2010s mm. Um, so it's not there, but that's why these relationships exist. You can market it effectively. You can book it in theory effectively, promote them effectively. And for me, this is really effective. Mm. I'm instantly into that trios match. Like I've watched a criminally low amount of CMLL and it made me feel like a bad analyst watching this angle play out. But I've really tried, well, I haven't really tried, but I've tried when the wrestling mood has struck me to seek out CMLL mainly last year. And I was so unbelievably impressed by Volador Jr. What a baby face that guy is. Obviously he's situationally, mm. I guess, a tweener going against the tweeners in the BCC. This is really effective, completely bulls from the blue stuff, a completely different dimension to the AEW New Japan relationship. This just feels a little bit like how it should go of, oh, this AEW, everyone says it's elite and it's the best, well, hang on. The mm. buildings we're playing in front of and all yeah. the rest of it, you know. This is the first time I think they've really gone in on inter promotion and I'm bang into it. Yeah, I mean it was it was well booked in the strictest terms because you had a bunch of guys that you even if you don't know, it's and it's okay to be uninformed on these guys because that's as Cedric points out, that's what this angle can mm. fill you in on. But they're going for the top guy. 
straight away and going for John Moxley, that is, they're making it very clear that they're Statement not, of intent. Yeah, they're not scared of him, they're not scared of AEW, all that kind of thing. There's a, like, there's no real massive established relationship between John Moxley and the people that saved him, so it's very much just like, well, we're with AEW, so we're going to help our top guy yeah. out. So that's, you know, it's implying plenty there about how this is all going to play out. I like this as a just a, are you, you're not getting this on Raw. Mm. Like, it's, I'd, I pushed back a little bit last year on people's default, it was mainly when people didn't like MJF, but it was like this default, sports entertainment equals bad. Mm. Right? I like sports entertainment done well. So in my opinion, our wrestling company can do some. Yeah. Don't consume AW with sports entertainment, but find a gap where it works and fits, and there's absolutely a place for a little bit of it, or whatever you classify sports entertainment to be. But AW in the meantime, in offering a bit of everything, should still mostly be searching for stuff that the market leader doesn't do. Mm. Do some of the stuff, but only a bit. Look for what they don't, and they just won't book angles like this. Probably because they can't. I mean, you can't. Jordan Grace can enter a role. They could. Rumble. Well, maybe. They, they could have done this for years. Jordan Grace. They should have done or, this or for Or won't, years. maybe. Like, Jordan Grace can enter a Royal Rumble, but realistically, can you ever visualize four or five TNA guys um, going out there like, and beating up Roman Reigns? Not in a million years. It's just Where's not the hard w- cam, though? They don't know where it is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not how WWE. What a myth that is. It's not, well, it's not, not, even, not even a hot take there. They don't book their stars that way, do they? No. Roman Reigns is not getting beaten up by four TNA guys. He couldn't get beaten by 10. He would beat them up. Mm. How dare you? And he'd beat them all up and they'd look small. It's just WWE just do not book them. Like the radicals, if you think about it, and this is what this is obviously being compared mm-hmm. to, that like absolutely the same, but they beat up the New Age Outlaws who were having a match, that like a like, tag match against Al Snow. Like, and like, it was then that they got, like, they were Mick Foley's friend. And that's how they beat up Mick Foley and help, they helped DX. They all lost to DX. Like on the SmackDown after they invaded, they all lost. Oh, they, had to be, they had to be learned. That's it, right? Yeah, they had to learn them. <laughs> learn, learn. Like they all lost it. So again, yeah. even when you do it, and people immediately went to that example, you do it the WWE way. And you're like, respect the business. <laughs> like, not here. No. They beat up John Moxley, and now they've got a bunch of matches to prove their point. So uh, like, I absolutely support like stuff like this, even if idiots like me and other viewers don't know who they are yet, because we're about to find out. That's fun. Mm. Uh, Hangman Page, dealer's choice match next. Uh, we knew he was going to be facing, of course, Toa Leona, um, undefeated, or first singles action, or whatever it was that they they said about this. Obviously, he's a terrifying presence in the Mogul Embassy is what they're trying to sell it as, and, and, and understandably, Hangman Page early on to try and counter that power, just tries to take his head off. Um, but uh, he's, he's doing well. Leona has to use an eye poke, um, but Hangman Page has is, is managed to frustrate him and managed to avoid him. Um, Gets a springboard lariat on the apron, does Page, but he goes for a second. Leona catches him, launches him over the top to the floor. Page took a ridiculous bump. Oh, my God. Well, Page is a madman. And uh, Leona hits him with a running crossbody off the apron. Um, and then he got pounced to the floor when they go back in and tries to make a comeback. Leona dominates him picture in picture. Um, Page comes back, though, hits a tope, big time crossbody, gets a two count. Big elbows from Page. Goes for a dead eye, but the size of Leona means he can't hit it. Um, Leona hits a big thrust kick. He wants a rip cord, but uh, Page hits a lariat of his own. Um, swings to the fences with another one. Hits the dead eye, but Leona pops right up and just nails him with a headbutt. Um, Leona hits the rip cord discus lariat. Page kicks out at two. Um, tries to escape another sent on the apron, but Leona puts on the brakes and hits him with it. Tries a moonsault off the apron, misses. Page is like, is how you do a moonsault off the top. Uh, goes for a book shot. Leona ducks, gets him up, tries a pop-up Samoan drop. Page counters into a crucifix and gets the one, two, three. I don't think I could have loved that finish more. Mm. Well, the match was very good without being great. I thought, uh, Tio Leona? Why do I struggle with this guy's name? You think the actress is Tio Leone? She married to David Duchovny for a bit in real life? I think so, yes. Yeah, Taylor Leone, yeah. I think the right person. So now you've ruined it again. Oh, kill it. <laughs> Double kill. Tio Le- Toa Leona. Toa Leona. Toa Leona. Toa Leona. Leona. <laughs> Toa Leona. Toa Leona. Toa Leona. Sidgwick. Unless he is the latest to get six weeks of eating jobs. <laughs> like it's Jeff Hardy's turn now, isn't and it? Commander. I com- Command. I'm commander's like been doing it for years. <laughs> it's Jeff Hardy's turn now. Yes. Maybe it'll be Leona's turn for the next six weeks, and then we'll get a real, like a stronger sample of how good he is. Because for me, just Hangman Page is unbelievable. Like, I thought his individual performance here, not to sell Leona short, but his individual performance here was absolutely fantastic. His approach to this match was absolutely fantastic. Really liked the dynamic of the cerebral, whip-smart baby face getting a real test of this 
monster. Yeah, because we sort of, you and I talked about this before with the JD Drake thing. It's the same sort of thing in a way. He's a big lad, but there's no way Hangman Page is looting, but th- losing. But this is a different, different threat in, in Leone. It had a different dimension yeah. because the idea is that he's playing that classic Samoan wrestler yes. character who can ju- it's just rock hard, can eat anything. Like, it was raw if you try and do anything in his face. You have to approach the character like that, if you're Hangman Page, by wrestling a really cerebral mm. game, lulling him into errors, just trying to catch him out of advantage. I did think early, and you probably would be if it's your first singles match on national television, they did the spot where the baby face is struggling underneath, he's about to get sat on his face, for lack of, you know, <laughs> yes, a term, and then he ducks at the last second. You're meant to like, go like that, like horrified at mm-hmm. the thought. You missed by miles, and I thought, oh, is this going to go badly wrong? And then pretty much like that, it just mm. went really, really right. Hamlet, you might like this. We haven't talked about Dynamite much because <laughs> it was pretty boring before we hit the studio. Yeah. You know what this match reminded me of in terms of the way that Hangman Page just used his diamond sharp mind. Can I take a guess? Uh, we'll do one, two, three, go. Oh. One, two, three, Bret Hart. Bret versus Diesel. Bret? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was thinking about, I was thinking Bret Diesel, that trilogy, and how he used the whole trilogy. He'd be like, man, he only ever gets one shot, and then I'm down again. Yeah. <laughs> because he's big, he's hard, he's Aye. tough. But I've got loads more to me. I've got an Arsenal. This he was the like, most Bret I've seen Hangman work. There are obviously connections parallels between mm-hmm. the two they're both very very smart they can, they're both excellent at structuring a match this is the most Brett mm. I've had out of Hangman Page I really enjoyed it I don't think it was great and look again like, I don't want to be harsh on Leona but we'll see if he's that good again or if Page was the difference here I like the um, it's this great trick that there's not many wrestlers that can get away with it quite like Hangman Page because there haven't been many wrestlers like him where he wrestles that exact uh, like kind of thoughtful match where he's got to he's got to solve the puzzle of the yeah. monster he's fighting or the hard wrestler he's fighting whatever, but then he also knows and his opponents sometimes forget he's pretty big and hard as well. Yeah, <laughs> like and that's like this thing that again it takes like a certain build and a certain ability level and I think Hangman one of his like biggest strengths is almost obscuring one or the other. Mm. So if he goes in like a Brian Cage match is a good example because he goes in and you think we're going to see more of a meat match here. Hangman Page is going to do that, and then he'll be like, oh, he's also got way more of a brain in his mm. head than Brian Cage, and that's what's going to be there. And the, it's, this is sort of the opposite of that. But that's, uh, I like, I don't know why I'm not loving them more. I think it's just the booking of Page over the last couple of years. I think this is, the, one of the best things about this run of, like, really good to great matches he's having is that it's a run. It's mm. not a, yeah. that was great, seeing six. Like, this is, like, he's needed... This constant stream, it's great. The rankings are back as well yeah. and the, the swerve stuff. He's needed this constant stream of reminders week on week on week on week because you just, he, what he feels so much more relevant mm. having them, you're being reminded. Uh, uh, you say this all the time as a world champion. I wish they'd make, made him a weekly Brett. Not weekly, but you know what I mean? A very mm. regular yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. TV title guy. The champ's here and he's going to beat you because yeah. he's the best. Like, that's the best way to book Hangman Page. I'm liking watching this. Yeah, we'll get to more on him a little bit later on, but intriguing to see what happens next with Leona because he's kind of just dipping his toe in the water when it comes to singles action. So did you stop listening when Sidge was talking on me? We can just never tell. <laughs> Watch it back. See if you spot it. The eyes glaze over. Speaking of arseholes, uh, Matthew <laughs> and Nicholas Jackson have shown up. Um, they've got goatees now. and uh, Good move. Yeah. They yeah. get a format for the show. And they go, and they go, there you go, Matt and Nick. And they go, what did you just call me? And they say, that's not our names. They find the bloke $500 and Matt's... Good sort cop. of, yeah, well, sort of the good cop. He says, sorry about him, he can be a bit hothead, but make sure you pay the fine by the end of the day. It's good. Still you saying this. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. It's all right, isn't it? I'll judge it after the first pay-per-view cycle. Yeah. Um, this next match was kind of overshadowed with what happened towards the end of it. So we'll talk about that in, as part of it. It was Commander taken on Wardlow. Uh, Adam Cole rolled over to commentary to get, get ready for the ass-kicking of the century. Uh, Wardlow, in the early stages, just, just ragdolls Commander. Uh, he's trying to use his speed. He does tr- get some offense in, trying to take out the leg of Wardlow, but he gets hit with a pop-up power slam, big beal, and then a massive F10. Um, Wardlow poses. Um, Commander rolls outside, but counters a power bomb into a Hurricane Rana into the steps. Uh, Wardlow eventually springs back up to the apron. A line. vertical leap. Oh my god! That, that plus, by the way, using the Tron as his own mirror as he flexed. <laughs> keep that. Keep Absolutely that. Absolutely keep that. I'm not. Con- well, we'll talk about this, but keep that. Commander kicks the ropes though as he's climbing um, back in. 
hits a rope walk, drop kick, Phoenix splash, um, where he landed sort of knee first on his throat. I do hope he's okay. Um, tries another rope walk, uh, but Wardlow catches him with a spinning power slam. He does that hanging knee lift out of the corner. Hits the power bomb for the victory, but as part of that, his knee or legs just sort of gave out. Um, slight concern here. Um, post-match, Roddy gets on the mic and tells Mike Bennett to throw Commander back in the ring and says Commander should have taken his deal um, from uh, Collision, of course. He'll now pay the price. Um, but Orange Cassidy and Best Friends make the save. Um, he says, see you later, guys. Still just completely unconvinced by, with the exception of Roddy, even though this Orange Cassidy stuff's not great. It's good, and the match will be good. But like, I'm just c unconvinced by virtually everything pertaining to the Undisputed mm. Kingdom. Every single time I see Adam Cole, I wish he was at home playing games, not being asked to, like, fly everywhere. He can't do out as a character or, like, as a per I just... Why didn't you, after Grand Slam, and the poor bastard's ankle got shattered in however many places, just not write stories involving Adam Cole? Like everybody else gets the, the benefit of doing that. Yeah. And the only story you can write was this. It just it cannot possibly come off any worse as like this mastermind heel faction leader who's going to be the champion one day. It just he's he's very seriously injured. Mm. Uh, and I doesn't, tell you what, doesn't feel like the group that closed out the last pay per view. Basically, nah, it's just it's just it's a total non-starter. I've said this every single week. And I'll not stop him. It's a non-starter. And the thing about Wardlow is that I really like the vertical leap to say, you can't even do an aerial. I'm too much of a super athlete. I can just jump to where you are flying from. That was great. The flexing in the mirror is great. It's like he's the best, one of the best squash guys ever. And he keeps coming up with new ways to be an even cooler squash guy. Mm -hmm. And yet, this is an establishing match for a character that to be brutal about things, I know has already failed to live up to that standard with AEW. And I, I feel like a hypocrite here. It should be so refreshing to see like, I don't know, a like Goldberg or a Sid guy, a bit more refined, obviously, yeah. in that main event picture. When, in the same breath, I will all also complain about like the relentless back and forth, like back and forth, back and forth, match, 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 especially when match quality is nowhere near the selling point it was what it once was. It should be refreshing, but I know he has to get there eventually. Like the one time you have to do a lengthy back and forth matches if you're going to be the world champion. Mm. So it's like he's establishing a character I already know cannot exactly go at that level. So it just feels a bit fatalistic is maybe the word. I feel like they're all badly lacking in aura because of the stable lacking mm. in aura. I think it's impacting all of them individually and together. When they're out there together, it doesn't look, it looks a bit forced and it looks a bit fake. And then when Wardlow is doing the Wardlow match, he doesn't feel like he's got half the aura he did when he was uh, not less by himself, but certainly like the old days of the MJF run. Cole, as you he say. He used to look bigger. Yeah, like Cole is ill-fitting in this role. Um, strong, I guess. Maybe he's... It's going to look better, yeah, when he gets a bit of gold around his waist, perhaps. It's, Strong's getting the best of this so far, I would say. Taven and Bennett scored draw from where they're at before, but, like, Roderick Strong... The champions. Yeah. I know, I mean, yeah. that score yeah. draw. I was about to say, is this going to look better when the stable gets gold, and then I remembered they already have well, that some. says That says That's it all, it. doesn't it? The, like, the, 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 you know, the stuff with the knee, the, the botch and that, it was pretty ugly. Wardler looked quite annoyed, and obviously now we know that he's, he's saying he's all right. Yeah, yeah. thankfully he seems like he's fine. I can speak about this with a bit more of a relief, but yeah. Yeah, he tweeted, because uh, obviously yeah, a lot of people were mentioning the, the knee giving out and obviously not seeming to be part of the finish, and people, very wood on social media, I should say Wardlow subsequently tweeted, a normal man's knee would be ruined. I'm no normal man. I'm still coming for the heavyweight title, uh, and there's nothing and no one that can stop me. Knee is just fine, which is a real relief. Yeah, this I, it, it's missed it since day one. Um, after they beat him up, this stable needs MJF to yeah to exist. It's like I, I I don't buy like everything. It feels like they're doing feels secondary to why they were formed in the first place, and they've never got around that. Do you know the name of the new film he's just finished rap, wrapping up on? No. Yes. It's time to play the game. Time to play, time to play the game. Ha 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 ha! What is the name of MJF's 
Jewish summer camp comedy film. Yeah. Is that close enough? Mm-hmm. Um, is it the or is it just the. okay? Yeah, it's the something. The I don't know. It's nothing to do with his character, obviously. It's no, like an AW no. funded vehicle. I've, I've, <laughs> I've got absolutely no idea. The floaters. <laughs> what? It's that poo in it. It's a Jewish summer camp comedy. Oh, right, okay. So let's see what it looks like. It's got yeah. what's his name in it? Who is it? You told me. Uh, about? Steve, it's got Steve Gutenberg and Seth Green in it. Gunberg's back. Yes. Gunberg's back. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where's that guy? I know. He's, he's had a he had a recurring role. You know the sitcom, The Goldbergs. He was like a kindly teacher in The Goldbergs. He was like, yes, Steve Gutenberg as a kindly. Oh, so he's been back. He's kicked around. I don't, I don't know if he's made he's films. So no he's been idea. so back for a while. I don't know. Actually, <laughs> film wise, I don't know. I feel like it went police academy. Where you gone? <laughs> yeah, that's the same. Um, right. I him in that though, Mahoney. One of the top baby faces of 80s cinema. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I was, I was putting that bloody Harris in his place. <laughs> na, 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 me hat stuck on. <laughs> Money. <laughs> uh, Tony Schiavone <laughs> sits down with uh, Dolby Allen Sting, uh, Ricky Starks, and Big Beal ahead of their tag title match next week. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to interject. It's, it's my favorite part of the show, this. Good. Um, Schiavone says, no physicality. Stark says, it's been quite the journey for Sting in AEW, a journey that started with me. Um, and, uh, of course, you got your first win in AEW against me. I think this was interspliced with footage as mm-hmm. well from that. Um, Darby yeah, Sting looked like he could really move. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I have done that for a year. <laughs> Darby Allen says, Sting's full of, sorry, says Stark's is full of, you know what, uh, he isn't respecting Sting. It's about a stepping stone, and Sting's anything but that. Stark says, look, next week, two things are going to happen. We're going to retain the tag titles, uh, and I'm going to get my win back on Sting, uh, and I'll make sure Sting doesn't make it to his retirement show, um, and I don't respect you one bit, Darby Allen. Uh, Big Bill says, you two run your mouths about how Sting's going to retire as a tag team champion, but just like everyone else, you're overlooking us. We're going to take our frustrations on you next week. Sting said he admired Starks back in the day. Um, he was the only one who had the balls to talk smack, but respect is earned. Um, Where's my Uh, Sting tells Bill the only difference between... He's obviously faced numerous giants in the past. Uh, They were killers. Not sure yet about Big Bill. Poke the bear. Um, Darby Allen... Poke the bill. um, Says he respects Starks, but every time he points the finger at everyone else, the only one to blame is himself. Ricky gets fired up by all this. Throws a water bottle in Darby's face and says, go on then, take a swing. Uh, Sting holds him back and says, I always hate a talk. Darby is going to hit you next week, and I'm going to do it as well. I want to see next week now. Yeah, I'm just excited. Mm. Sting's next week. low, you've fucked up gravitas, and his delivery at the end of this verbal segment was the best thing on the show by one million miles. Because he's just like, yeah, we're going to get you. He's like, I want to see you get them next week and win the belts. Is it, is it Dead Man's Shoes? Where I've never just, seen it. Oh my it's God, it's, so, it's one of the best films. Paddy Considine just goes. I've seen it like TikTok. Yeah, mm. he says, like, you're here. And he just goes, and he, he literally says, I'm going to hit you. And like, doesn't seem like the threat is I'm going to kill you. I'm going to, you know, he just says I'm going to hit you. And it's the most, one of the most terrifying lines in cinema. I've got you there, mate. Yeah. Oh, I need to watch uh, it. A lot of people. I'll watch Tremors. You watch Dead Man's Shoes. You'll never watch Tremors. Oh. I'll watch Dead Man's Shoes when you watch Tremors. Okay, deal. I've been telling you to watch it for two years. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I think you'll love it. Um, I really, really thought this was great, mainly with the delivery mm. and the sense of emotion that like, I thought was really, really well performed. I genuinely bought Ricky Starks wanted to drop the F-bomb but didn't and caught himself. I thought the emotional aspect and delivery of the material here was good. Mm. But I had one issue with the material itself. Darby Allen can sometimes, we saw it in the Pillars feud, can sometimes do that work shoot thing that I hate Mm. where he talks about the perception of a wrestler outside of their character as opposed to the character. And when you blur the lines, you quite literally miss the point. Mm. Um, He's basically saying Ricky Starks is going to go to WWE, playing on the idea that it feels at times like Ricky Starks has went away, or at least he's been heavily linked with a move to WWE this year or imminently or whatever. And then he says... The idea is that Ricky Starks in AEW in his career this far has always been on the cusp of superstardom. Mm -hmm. 
Why hasn't it really happened? Why is he not headlining those pay-per-views? He seems to have the complete package. Great in the ring. He can emote. Buddy Helly can talk. He looks the part. So Darby Allen's basically saying, you uh, come up with excuses for why you haven't made it. Mm -hmm. He's the world tag team champion. <laughs> yeah, As the tag team champion in AEW, he's literally on top of the world. And they're saying, oh, everyone overlooks us. It's like, you've had those belts for ages. Mm -hmm. You're the champions. Why aren't they being betrayed as the champions? They've beaten all comers. It's weird. I don't like it. I feel like this sort of thing is endemic to wrestling where they've been blurring the lines with this sort of thing and talking about the persona and not the character for so long that virtually everyone at some point forgets what they're meant to be doing. <laughs> I feel like the only one. I'll tell you what, though. I can, I can smell the pre-cum coming out of Hamlet right now <laughs> because what's, what's happened here is that, and I know it's your favourite thing. It's I don't even know. I know what my favourite thing is. It's your favourite thing on Tuesday mornings. <gasps> what? Talk about Raw? Well, 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 well. Uh -huh. When a character mm -hmm. remembers a connection made between another character yeah. earlier in their respective shared careers, and we got that with Sting and Ricky Stark, so I know you're jacking it. <laughs> I, I did appreciate that. I, I like... Put it over then. I like... Um, <laughs> I like where is, where is my respect, the character trait. I like that. Like, that I don't have a problem with... It's on the... It's the fault of the challengers that they need to catch up mm. and realise that Big Bill and Ricky Starks are a serious threat. I think... Oh, I was... I thought Ricky I, Starks, I like yeah. that as a trait because they've said that before and even when they won the belts, it was like... An ups, it was an upset yeah. that they won, but look at how they won. They, I can believe that they think, why are people calling this an upset? We battered them and then we keep it winning. Was, it was on like, Darby's part for me. I thought Ricky yeah. Starks, who I'm sometimes a little bit harsh on, only because I think he can do better. Mm. Yeah. And he can be a little bit awkward at times. I thought he nailed this, mm -hmm. but I think Darby just, again, it's such a shame. Sorry, I know I'm stepping on your dick. You know, the pre comes bum now. <laughs> it's that sometimes, like Darby last week, it's like, you forget, he has matured yeah. into quite the mm -hmm. promo. He's not like great, but he's on that Bret Hart tier of, you believe everything he says, mm -hmm. yeah. and he can do it with composure. And it's better that he's not a great performer, almost, because it just adds to the authenticity of the character. So it annoys me when he, Misses it like you did here a bit. I'll say this is I look favorite thing on the show. This I just I bought it. I really really want to watch the match. I think they both formed arguments. In spite of Revolution's match being obvious, these two teams formed really good arguments mm -hmm. about why they could both win. The young bucks being allowed to exist outside of the rankings if they want, and you being hit over the head with the fact that they can they're on a power mm -hmm. trip, so they could like. And then obviously with the tease of what we got later, it's become a really hard match to call and something that matters to both teams, which again goes right back to AEW, like using the wins and losses and the titles as the, the point of all. It's why you go to work. So just generally, before we move on, what Ricky Starks in summary and Bill, Big Bill were saying there was they wanted some... Where is my respect? <laughs> they wanted some data. Data. <laughs> and then we lost that. I suppose them. Like that. <laughs> Literally, without even saying it, I just went, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then it was time for uh, Chris Jericho versus uh, Carl Fletcher. Skip. No, that's no, fun. No, okay. It wasn't really fun. It was... Uh, Judas Fett uh, was all right. Mm. Back in his long, long tights. Better than he's singing on the cruise. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get into it to start with. Uh, Fletcher hit a nice surprise Mishinoku driver for a near fall early on. Um, they go to the floor... Uh, <laughs> I ain't not saying a crisp. And I don't know you are either. <laughs> <laughs> Jericho low bridge him. Yeah, springboard drop kick to the floor. Jericho chases Callis away from the ring so Fletcher can cut him off. Uh, we go back inside. Fletcher controls until Jericho cuts him off the ropes. Ten punches, Hurricane Rana. Hobbs runs distraction, though, and Callis trips up Jericho so Fletcher can gain control into the break. Jericho makes a comeback when we come back. Double sledge off the top. Bulldog. Uh, slowly goes for a lion salt, but uh, Callis takes the referee and Hobbs just decks Jericho. Fletcher tries to put him away, but he gets put in the walls of Jericho. Fletcher makes it to the ropes uh, and hit, catches Jericho with a thrust kick. They get up. Jericho hits a code breaker. Uh, Fletcher tried a brain buster on the top rope. Uh, they both go down. One at a powerbomb, but Jericho back dropped out of it into a pin. Fletcher hit another thrust kick. Jericho tried to answer with a Judas effect, but Fletcher dodges it. Um, Fletcher tried to dive to the floor, but Jericho hit a Judas effect in midair. Hobbs gets shoved down. A bit. Jer Jer Jericho hits a spinning super Judas effect off the top and gets the one, two, three. And then Kanosuke Takeshita's music comes out and they have a stare down ahead of their, sh their match next week. <sighs> Skip. Um, elements of this weren't bad. 
Jericho was trying to make a point here, and I don't think he quite made it, but you could see with the likes of the Judas effect, which Fletcher saw anyway, even though it was glancing, but the Brain Buster spot in particular, that was very Christian. I'll show them. And he so did. Remember the RVD, King of the Ring? Yeah. We yeah. talked about Dave, that was five stars, whatever. And, he, and then he performs a certain way afterwards. And that's when it tends to go wrong, because when he's trying so hard, you want to be surprised by how great Chris Jericho can I, I still be. This it, in his that. defense, he was, ooh, blinded by the lights. I was going to say, I think, <laughs> I think he was blinded by the lights in this arena, and the match was kind of tainted as a result. He loves it. <laughs> I love it. Like, like Mario Kart, he's not that bad after all. Uh, I this was is this the end of Chris Jericho, and we can't even do a think piece on it because I don't think at this point anyone would click or watch because yeah. he's uh, he's profoundly overexposed, and it was just this callous Jericho thing is so like the the most hollow stakes. Not convincing conflict dragged out for six months. Yeah, mm. what this is this is absolutely vintage Jericho. <laughs> they really should quack on with it. Speaking of which, we got the uh, duck tattoo explanation. No, no, I'm still not finished. Oh, sorry, I do my analysis of but, the match. Well, he was finished because <laughs> he wrote that down in his He's notes been ahead of like finished. Like, Whenever I've been talking, sorry. years. I, stuff. This was this could be the end of Chris Jericho, right? Now you know what I've just manifested. Like a four and a half star match with Takesh the next week. Yes. yes. That's what I've just manifested by saying that. But we were talking on the preview yesterday. It's out of date, but give it a listen. That the last true shortcutless Chris Jericho singles match was against Ishii or at a push Claudio mm. in 2022. You had not one straight great singles match in 2023. That form has continued into 2024. This felt like he was really going for that quote unquote banger. Yeah. With like they were hitting each other hard, they were chopping each other hard, and they were going for the near falls. It just felt like the absolute stated aim, transparently so, was banger, with the idea being that he's going to have to use his wits to survive this explosive young stud. And that brain buster spot was terrifying. He just completely whiffed a bulldog early. He was um, doing that, like, I'll show them wrestling. And when that doesn't work, and it's very it's obvious so that's what you're doing, it's, it's not really, great. Really like, you can't go back to the curtain and be like, follow that, because the next wrestlers go, okay. Yeah, <laughs> quite, <laughs> you got quite it. easily. I'm just about to, yeah. <laughs> and another thing as well, I was watching this, and I was removed from the action, like, every single time Powerhouse Hobbs interfered. Because I'm watching Carl Fletcher in this ring. You know, I'll give you the rub. I'll do an avalanche version of my finish. I'll do a special modification of the finish to, to protect you. Okay. Powerhouse Hobbs destroyed him. Mm. He's barely done any singles matches since. Surely, with this continuity heavy, everything is ever, we've ever done has mattered and sometimes adds up to a whole like storytelling vision that AEW has. Like, Takeshi got, got, got nothing from beating Omega twice. Hobbs destroyed the first AEW world champion. Didn't get a sniff at singles gold after that. And this is pre-rankings as well. Like, the, this nothing happens. Like, so little happens of consequence. And this feud epitomizes that so much. Hopefully the rankings are the answer because this match was very much unrankings era manifest. Mm. Well, Takeshi's not in the top five, is he? No. So he has to get started, I guess, next week with that win, doesn't he? It's, just, it's, it's inconvenient for him to be in that. I wish, like, they would just write, Takeshita, you're going over. Like, Tony Khan is not the backbone for this. Takeshita, you're going over. We've beat you, Jericho. You ran out of friends in the end. Where's Sammy Guevara? Mm. Who cares? You ran out of friends. We'll beat you. Let's all just move on. Mm. Yeah. And my studs, my stable of studs, can go on to, I don't know, work Copeland when he wins a TNT or something. Mm. Yeah. Because Copeland and Carlos have got that connection. Yeah. Uh, so we get the Diana Perazzo uh, tattoo meaning uh, video. Uh, I will say, as much as I inferred what it was about, I thought it was a really strong idea yeah. to show the photos of them together, mm -hmm. just literally illustrating the fact that they did have this bond and there is emotional way to the storyline. So I think it's great for the Tony Storm character. Like, do, through Diana Perazzo, you're now getting to, rather than just laugh at the sort of, all the daft stuff she's doing, there's an element of, oh God, like, what's gone wrong? For you? Like, there's a- I don't um, think that. I, I think there's a bit of heft to, like, I think Tony Storm wins, but I think there's a bit of heft to this. And Perazzo is one of the few characters you could have done this with. It's flawed though, because everyone just loves Tony Storm. She was on commentary, she had an absolute killer line. Yeah. 
and this is kind of a hint at, oh, the old Tony Storm will come back and people don't want that. People just want the fun Tony Storm. So it's, you know what I mean? It's mm. a totally flawed premise. It's happening in the matches at the pay-per-views as well, isn't it? She's just too popular. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, it's stymie and the baby faces attempt to get over in the match because like, yeah. oh, we kind of, it's all fun and games, but we want her to win. It's and deeply return. flawed. I can see what they're going for, but yeah. the character's too entertaining right now. Um, the Bang Bang Scissor Gang came out and skip. Kind of did nothing. Yeah, I'll just skip so it. They came out and they said, what did they say? They just sing my gag. <laughs> Basically. Basically. I thought this was pretty good. I, 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 I knew he would. I think it's a play assist. I think their entrance kicks ass. I think this new theme they've got is great. I think it's like, I don't believe in them. And I quite like watching for the clues as if Jay White's going to just, t like, if and when the turn, like, rock card is great. Like, I, I, I think this was an So basically, hang on, there's, a, there's a pun in there, so you like it. Certainly helped. You got to try and get access. Nobody's over on the show. I don't care about anybody for the most part. And I think like matches are going to help. But like, I think this acts like, I think it's breathing life into the acclaimed mm -hmm. dead in their ass. Like, I think it's like, I thought this was Jay White being miscast. I'm starting to think it's not. They always get like a uh, pop the acclaimed before this, but it should be more. Like no, that, that was time, that time's been squandered. As a like, trio, at least, that time has come As a sex duplet. There must He's be some it. kind of like, I'll let you explain why you like this incredibly wafer-thin segment imminently. But my God, like, there must be some internal data mm. that tells you. Like, they'll have the minute-by-minutes, the merchandise. Yeah. Uh, they'll have all of these, like, metrics that tell them people literally love the acclaimed, put them on the show for you know, whatever reason, this reason, which was nothing because people of the acclaimed. I think that's it. I think like there's a bit, a little but bit, why? Of, a little bit of call and response and audience engagement and interaction doesn't hurt. It's like a something that you would go to that show and come away glad that you had that. I had like, a dark segment afterwards. I was going to say, you don't maybe, need to be on telly. Maybe. That's it. Yeah, maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's the point. I was watching this and there were so few things where I'm thinking I want to You're taking this wrestling matches aren't good. No, I Gimmick think, very, very far. I, I, and I'm, I'm joking. WWE but. has helped remind me in 2023 at least, help me remember that I, what I should want is to go to those buildings and be part of it. Mm. And I get so lit, like I was in a building, that, like just under I a year ago. I didn't that building last night, brother. And exactly right. Yeah. And I'm, that's all the time with AEW, all the time. And then there's just this little thing where like, oh, that would have been fun. Like, I'm, I'm not going to fly in New Orleans again. I'm not going to trip in as many. Should have gone. Should have gone. I was I right. Was I was proven no, right on that. Vindication. You proven right. Thank you. Thank you, Punk, for getting injured and vindicating my uh, <laughs> correct assessment that I should have gone you to New Orleans. Correct. You were not correct. I, I think this is. I think this is wrestling more than half the matches on this card. Genuinely, I do. Bit of catchphrase. Bit of bollocks. Like this has got so much more value than like some of the matches that AEW books genuinely like. Aye, but that's it's, it's a long because... way to go. It's an uphill. I get it with everybody. It's uphill with everybody. Like there's so few wrestlers that are actually speeding up the hill because every treacle you use the word, they're all wading through it. These aren't. These look like they should, they, they're stars. They do belong on a wrestling show Disagree. on television. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the Hardys and Mark Briscoe are number two contenders for the trios titles. Just a heads up on that one. So I'd rather work segments. One out of three ain't bad. <laughs> it's Mark Briscoe. I'd rather this every week than work the Hardys once. Uh, Tony Storm was on commentary for what came next. Uh, that was it awesome. It was the, sorry, sorry, Sid. Uh, Here's the only women's match on the show. Yeah. Um, it was uh, Dionna Perrazzo, uh versus Taya Valkyrie. Um, she's, Perrazzo dominates early on, but uh, Valkyrie goes after the leg, puts her in a submission. Perrazzo gets to the ropes, takes uh, uh, Taya down with a tilt wheel head, head scissors. Um, it's right in front of Tony Storm, who says, how do you do, uh, to Tyre Valkyrie. Johnny TV trash talks to distract Perrazzo. Uh, he get hit with it, got hit with a spear. Um, uh, oh, no, sorry, there was a spear, obviously, off the back of that from Tyre, and she necked on with Johnny as we went to break. When we come back, Perrazzo's back in control. Uh, another leg sweep into the uh, Venus de Milo. Valkyria, uh, Valkyrie ex escapes. I keep getting confused between Lyra Valkyrie and Tyre Valkyrie. I do apologize. <laughs> Um, Storm, I've not noticed Tuesday night in your heart it well, is. is not helping. Um, I wrote this line down particularly. Neither of these women compared to Wendy Richter. She's happy to be here in New Orleans. She was given a lovely pair of beads when she arrived, but not for her neck. Sid, I don't know what um, she could have possibly meant by that. Right, okay. Well, the idea is you wear beans as part of the beans. beans I've got beans <laughs> on the line. I love my beans. Must be doing the weekend in white. I've my beans. I love my beans. Danny, why? 
So you went beat to spot the Mardi Gras celebrations, correct? I yes. So. But not around her neck. Um, I think she did say she was a very sexual character the other week. Mm-hmm. And she had a new room massage booked last week. You were probably lost on there. Did Hamphill help you out with that line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I didn't. I don't know what the thing that is. <laughs> it's anal beads. So. Okay, got it. Is a new room massage the thing that you Google on incognito? <laughs> yeah. On the work Wi Fi, Wilbur. Yeah. On the work Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> For all those third search. Um, they train in leg submissions. Frazo sends Valkyrie to the floor, uh, has a face off with Storm, sends Tyre into uh, Tony Storm, who complains that someone's pissed on her seats, and Frazo submits uh, Valkyrie. Good and bad. The bad was this was just there. The good is it wasn't quite as sludgy as I expected it to be. It's one of those where it feels like already Diana is in that. Right, you're the established star, or the one we're pushing. Give your opponent something. It's Wednesday night, and that's what it means. Mm. Um, but the finish is just so cool that mm. it's that's what it's leaves just, the lasting oh. impression. You can do anything, and then the finish is great. Forgot how flexible uh, Ty Valkyrie was. Good matchmaking yeah. in the end because yeah. of the way she can control yeah. her body to yeah. put those finishes over. Aye, uh, the body of it wasn't great, but the finish was uh, as ever very strong. I love the idea. I mean, I love the line. Sorry, where Tony Storm on commentary was like, "Well." You know, I usually send out an invitation for the for everyone to get their tits out. It looks like Tyre Valkyrie's already RSVP'd. <laughs> yeah, that was tremendous. Funny line. Absolutely, like Tony Storm is back. Mm. The uh, George Mizanin put him up stance as well <laughs> like, to defend himself. Uh, before we move on uh, and before we get to the game, uh, before we get to the name of the game, we have to get to the aim of the game, Sige. The aim of the game. <laughs> So I identified to the hour, minute, and second, the first time you hear the first note of the first entrance theme for the first women to appear for the only women's match on Dynamite because it tends to be within the same range of mm-hmm. 120 to 125 minutes. So the idea is if we can just nail it to the second, it will underscore, put, and bold, italicize just how much of an afterthought this division is, how much of a token it is. But you have to do it these days. No one will complain, <laughs> especially them wokes. Ugh. I hate it so much. <laughs> and there, so the, the, the little subtext message that AEW sends to its audience is, of course, it's, like, it's to tell them not to worry. The women will be out the bloody way soon enough. And then the subtext is, don't worry, guys. When the women come out to play, the main event ain't too far away. That's the aim of the game. Uh-huh. The <laughs> name of the game. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> and the name of the game is, well, this is ladies' night, and I'm thinking, ooh, what a night. Shout out as always to uh, the left, one right. <laughs> Every time. Adam Swear's Blair. Drives. I'm 38 with two children. Swear's when he drives. <laughs> uh, shout out to Adam Blair, uh, at Adam Wilton 4, and uh, Jose Palomares, at the Ho 11, who always take care of the um, data for this sort of thing. Um, Sid, you had the timings from our previous day. I should point out, by the way. That we are running over. Yes. Um, <laughs> do, do go and check out the preview from yesterday, because we did a big ladies' night quiz. Brilliant quiz written by Adam yes. Blair as yes. well. Thank really you. Quiz was excellent. Well done. Um, Sige, what were the timings that we guessed in descending order? Oh, descending never order. In descending order. Sidgwick, one hour, seven minutes and 12 seconds. Michael Hamflat, one hour, 17 minutes and five seconds. Adam Wilborn, I don't know you from Adam. <laughs> one hour, 19 minutes, 18 ah. seconds. It was one hour, 25 minutes and 36 seconds. I'm on it's the board. Always the 25. Why didn't yeah. I go for it? I think we, this is our year. I think we're going to get it. One to Hamlet, one to me. Sige, the winner of Ladies Night last year, of course, still to get on the board. I, I am uh, behind the eight wall. <laughs> uh, I'd have stood a chance there if uh, they'd not done that. Uh, bang, bang, scissor, gang segments. Maybe I was wrong. Yes. Maybe that would have got me you were wrong to win. begin with. <laughs> it's, it, it, I know we do this every single week. And the more laborious it is, the more I think it's worth doing. Mm. Such a... You know the format of this show inside out, don't you? Mm-hmm. When you podcast. watch it, it's... Aye. But Dynamite as well. Like, is there something they can do? I'm not a big fan of show long storylines generally. I think it makes... Too often, it makes the show feel like this produced show mm. and not the sporting broadcast that happens to be filmed. I do love the fixtures. I always have. It should be the norm. But like every six weeks, switch it up, like an injury angle or mm-hmm. a mystery or something. 
because it does feel like, right, well, it's time for this now. Right, I know it's time for that. It's just after four years, 200 plus episodes, it's like bloody hell. Yeah. It's a, 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 like a show-long storyline for the women has probably never happened as well. I think. You know what they probably did with Baker and uh, Big Swole back in the day? Of course, when she yeah, got yeah. put in the, the garbage Because they stuff. were forced to be a bit more creative with the... Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, Renee Paquette with a very weird interview with Darby Allen before the main event. Tell me about your admiration for the young books. And even Darby's like, what are you talking about? Well, he saw, well, Darby Allen basically says, huh? <laughs> um, and then of course, in walk the young books with headsets on. So, so answer the question. Um, Matthew says we come in peace and love, uh, or they say they come in peace and they love uh, Darby Allen. Hot young star, just like we are. Um, <laughs> that was a good line. I don't know why you're allowing a 65 year old to leech off you, but why don't we uh, join up? We were uh, emos back in the day. We could be a hot emo trio. Uh, and Nicholas says, you've been ducking us. Um, Alan says, all that's on my mind is the tag team titles. Darby Allen leaves and Matthew says, we'll have to get his attention another way. And then they tell, tell Renee, she's doing a great job. She looks at them with disgust. Huh? They're not stupid enough to, like, take them out of the title picture. No. Knowing that, well, we'll see. Mm. This was better than the uh, cutting to them in front of the screens. Yes, far I'll, better. I like this illustrate The idea that they could produce a segment that, that exists to put them over that they don't even feature in is nice power trip stuff. Yeah. I like that. That's poochy, isn't it? Yeah. All the other characters we talk, where are the young books? Where are the young books? Uh, main event time, dealer's choice for Swerve Strickland. Samoa Joe joins commentary for the main event. Uh, Rob Van Dam is revealed as Strickland's opponent. Uh, is that something we were talking about before the main event? Hmm? No, we're going to talk about it after. Oh, right, okay. Uh, <laughs> Hangman Page appears on the big screen and uh, says, by the way, dealer's choice also means I can pitch the ma pick the match type. It's a hardcore match. Swerve's like, what? Turns around, chair to his face by RVD. They go to the floor. Uh, Strickland gets sent into the railing, into the front row. Um, slingshot leg drop on the apron. And then RVD drapes Swerve on the railing and hits that signature spinning leg drop uh, to a huge pop from Samoa Joe. He cut to him and he was just loving this. And the crowd, like Van Damme was this week's Jeff Hardy, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> That's two weeks in a row where it's like, who are these guys that are fighting all the stars? Are we like, I don't know. Weird that. I don't like it. Uh, we come back from break. Swerve's in control. Sends RVT, RVD into the corner. Head oh, Van Tam. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it, man! Sends him head first into a chair. Mr. Monday afternoon. <laughs> um, rolling thunder from RVD gets him back in control. Uh, a running drop kick into the corner with a chair. Corner. <laughs> Damn it. They trade counters. Swerve gets crotched on the top rope. Uh, Brian Cage shows up, shoves RVD off the top, and Hook comes down with a chair and nails him in the back, and they brawl off. Uh, a bit of death dovetailing there. Mm. Because they've already had an interaction, have they not? Cage and Hook. Yes. Hook and Rob Van Damme were a team, weren't they, as well? Exactly, Captain that's what I'm saying. Mate. That's why I'm saying it's death. Um, yeah, collision. They had the, the, the face-off, of course. Correct. RVD got a quick roll-up off the back of that. Um, wants another rolling thunder. Swickling. Stri <laughs> <laughs> Swickland! Who's that? <laughs> Swickland Swick and Van Tam had a really fun match here. <laughs> it's like Pro uh, Evo's made a wrestling Swickland, game. Uh, <laughs> Swickland downed Van Tam in the end. Uh, Swerve counters into a rolling flatliner. Um, <laughs> kicks RVD into a chair at ringside. Hits the Swerve stomp off the apron. Uh, RVD comes back by just chucking a chair at Swerve when he's up top. And he falls and goes through a table. That ruled. I love that. Was that. Great. that was great. Uh, RVD set him up back inside, but missed the five-star frog splash with the chair on Swerve. Swerve hits the house call with the chair, um, sends RVD crashing to the mat, mocks RVD and hits the Swerve stomp for the win. Yeah, I think you made this point. So, you know when you like subconsciously borrow things? Like you were doing the, you know, the Mortal Kombat? Yes. Finish him. <laughs> and they're like that. Like Rob Van Damme, poor bastard, had to like sit up and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like that. When he had to wait for the what the house calls is finished. Uh the swerve stomp at the, the end. Swerve yeah, stomp, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think he flipped it. I think he was waiting so long he went, I've clearly recovered. Bollocks you just hit me with it. We'll do the bad news, good news, because everyone seemed to like this match way more than me. I think that by you know you can stop as well with these John Moxley meme jokes. There's a blood on dynamite anymore. It yeah. sucks. Mm. It sucks. There's a generic LED sheen over it. This is very much a WWE hardcore, hardcore match, other than the chair shots to the face, which I appreciate. You can do it, <laughs> can do it every now and then. Every now and then. Um, I didn't have that. Obviously, I can't have too much of that unhinged chaos because 
RVD can only do so much. And I think for the vast majority of the time here, he picked his spots literally really well, yeah. like of when to explode into life. Play the hits. And play the hits. Yeah. And when he, because he, he's so, got so much muscle memory and he's kept himself in great nick with his yoga and flexibility and stuff. He can still do these really quite unfathomable distances, especially for that leg Larry mm. on the barricade. I'm sure he's must be, so he's mid fifties now, isn't he? Which is what like Terry Funk was in his Chainsaw Charlie years. Aye. And you just can to compare the two. Yeah. Like how you can, re- like Funk was great at that, but I'm just saying in terms yeah, of physically yeah, yeah. what you offer. Absolutely. Like CBD can do for you. Well, indeed. <laughs> Cause I was worried, you know, he might, he might have a little smoke before he came out. And then of course he'd be uh, stood already. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> you, I did you. think, I, <laughs> I did think that it probably went a bit long. I don't necessarily think two weeks in a row, especially your, well, pre Akada and Osprey main event that elect, we'll see where that goes in about two minutes, mm. should be going 50 50 with Jeff Hardy and Rob Van Dam. With Invasion like, 2001. Like they were like <laughs> TNA asked 10 years ago. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't think it's a great look. I don't think it's done a great deal for Swerve. Um, and there were times when RVD, and again, the guy's old, it's fine. Mm. When it just, it, there's a spot very early where he was Irish whipping Swerve Strickland into the barricades. The idea of Swerve is going to be the one who's like sprinting into those guardrails, like selling on his back and creating the movement for Rob Van Dam. But when all, like when Van Dam is like kind of struggling to stand up as he's doing it early, these old guys have just got to warm up. Mm. Mm, yeah. Like that, that seems to be the key here. They've just got to warm up, get the... Like the part of the day, like it's all callousing. It's mm. better to work 20, 20 nights a week than five if you're a wrestler. Yeah. I don't understand how this works, but that's a wrestler's body telling them. So they do have to warm up, and this did get better as it went on, but I don't know, just this lightweight knockabout thing two weeks in a row. It's like, if I'm not analyzing this, and I'm a 38-year-old father of two, who's recently like, yeah, I've got other interests, rediscovered my love of literature recently, I'd probably read a book instead of this episode, you know? And then, oh, what's on next week? All right, watching that as soon as yeah, as soon yeah. as practicable. I, genuinely, it's a fun experience. I'm watching this. It's like, well, it's fun. Have I got time for fun this week? Nope. Well, I'm not making time for it then. I think that's a fair criticism. I enjoyed this monster. We did talk about this match in the office and not much else. Um, I, just, I just really like the energy levels. I think it's like you kind of underestimate like how, and we're seeing this all the time with AEW at the moment, how valuable it is to have like an engaged crowd. And it's probably not great that that was for Jeff Hardy last week and Van Damme for this, but at least Swerve's a common denominator in both. Mm-hmm. So there's an engagement in the Swerve match, even if your gut feeling is telling you it's for the wrong guy. And I think that's the case. Nonetheless, I ju- as a presentation, I just got a lot out of this way more than in any other match on the show, certainly. Uh, I like watching Van Dam. Uh, pick his spots is right. He is, he's playing the hits, but he's not playing all of them because he knows the ones that he can't do as well. Mm. And I think he's not doing the stuff that makes, that highlights that his speed is reduced, the highlights that maybe he does need to use something that he grab onto to pick himself up. Like he's working, he's working smart, but it looks like he's working hard. And that's the genius of some like dark arts wrestling stuff. Swerve now, he's got Paige next week, so you don't have the worry of, He's like really struggling because, you know, you could argue there was a bit of that with Dustin Rhodes at World End. Mm. Why is he struggling beating all these old guys? None of that next week. It's, it's, it's big time. He's done it three times. It's Hangman Page, like they're back, yeah. back to what he's so far been best at in AEW, which is wrestling Hangman Page. But yeah, the little moments like the chair at the head to the table still gave me that shock and awe yeah. feeling that I want out of a plunder match, out of a swerve match. So... I got a lot out of this, but violent enough for not me. too much more. Not too much more of it. I mean, what happened to the AEW TV balls to the wall? I think people got a bit sick of it, and you can't like rather if, that than this. If you trivialise violence on the levels at which they were wanting to deliver, like next, like Swerve. No, and I Hang- get, I get all of this you know, fundamentally. You know, like Swerve Hangman next week, you've got to keep something in the chamber for that to feel. I, I just can't remember the last. I just can't remember the last time I got that blood soaked. I can't believe I'm getting this on TV mm, feeling, yeah. and I understand that they. Did it too far, but the time's do it again now. Yeah, please, it's, aye, it's please. Been a while, it's been, a while. It's been uh, too long. So uh, to cover it off, uh, after the match, Hangman Page walks down with a mic, congratulates him, says, uh, "You're an evil bastard." Uh, and I can only weird sh- line reading. I can only assume. <laughs> I love Hangman, but that was piss poor. Oh, Congratulations. I kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can only assume we're now both top of the rankings that are going to be released tonight, and they're correct, of course. Um, 
I'll never let you get a shot at Samoa Joe in the AW World title, though I'm the next world champion, not you. Stringley just laughs in his face and says, I've beaten you twice. I've got nothing left to prove. You can't beat me. Page says, well, technically, the two times you won, you needed help from the Mogul Embassy. If it's one-on-one, you can't lace my boots. And uh, Strickland says, you know what? I'll give you what you want. One final match after we, I win again, though. I'm going to go on, never think about you again. Go on and become world champion. And Tony Khan has made it official for next week. Swerve Strickland versus Hangman Page, the winner facing Joe at Revolution. Love that it's happening. I really want, I don't, I still think we're getting the triple threat. Out it's of a three draw. Way. They've telegraphed the life out of this three way. It's a draw. It probably has to be, but I would like them to get we to could a put a bet on it. I mean, I already owe you Greg's like, so I don't know. Do you owe me one? Oh, you forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, fine. A good one. I have to wait till after WrestleMania. I can't let. Be good now. I can't even walk into a Greg's the next two months. Otherwise, I'm going to continue to look like this. So you've got a couple oh. more months before you have to pay it off. I don't know. I'm just a forward. brave embrace being a dad bod. You should do it as well. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this next week. You still have delusions of. You just, I have lot. I've just. I can't be honest. Clearing space for Philly cheesesteaks. That's what it is. I want to live That's like an American for a week. I've so. just given up. <laughs> don't you? Don't, maybe you don't have to. But it's, I, a, it's a nice headspace. I'm envious of that headspace. So dynamite next week. Like I say, Swerve versus Hangman Page. Winner faces Joe at Revolution. You've got the tag title match, Ricky Starks and Big Bill versus Sting and Darby Allen. Jericho versus Kanosuke Takeshita. CMLL lads versus the BCC. But most importantly, Tony Khan has got a big announcement. Hang on, we've got a thing for this. You're joking. Not another one? Sage, what is it this time? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's unpack this. Okay. Okay. Mm. Tony Khan has synonyms for this sort of thing, right? So Tony Khan has an important announcement. Tony Khan has a huge announcement. <laughs> Tony Khan has a big announcement. Now, what's at play here? Is it huge is more than big? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huge was Wembley, wasn't it? Well, that's, on th that's on thing. He's pro I can't remember. I have an itemized list in my <laughs> head of what every announcement versus synonym of yeah. big, huge, important, significant, whatever. So maybe he's downplaying it by saying, oh, it's big. Mm. It's not huge, but yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Um, or maybe he's uh, recognized that huge it's like, doesn't have much uh, SEO value anymore, does mm. it, Huge? <laughs> it really doesn't. Yeah, it really doesn't. <laughs> I wish we wish it still <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so maybe he's wary. He's very much dialed in on the pulse. Maybe he's wary of the criticism. And maybe big is just his way of saying, oh, well, they don't buy the huge announcements anymore. But what, what about a big one? What was the what was the announcement of an announcement? Was that a huge announcement that you, like you opened like a Russian doll and had a big announcement inside, <laughs> or was the big announcement? I've got a huge announcement next week. The, the, the huge announcement is that we are announcing that we are announcing the tickets. Yeah, things for that was it. that was the last one where it was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're taking the absolute piss. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So I uh, don't know if I'm reading into anything in terms of the synonym used, but. Realistically, and this is the problem with AEW, I was very much, nope, he hasn't ruined it yet. No, he hasn't ruined it yet. I think even when All Access was announced via the huge announcement match graphic, mm -hmm. I was like, well, hang on. This is pretty huge. You're, you're advertising a new TV show. Yeah. What are you meant to do with that? Yes. Just on the night of, just say, oh, yeah, there's another TV show. It's yeah. like, it's a big property, mm -hmm. but they hoped it would be a big property. And the network would want you to. The big network it up. would yeah, want yeah. you to big it up. Let's be realistic about it. It's a new property. Rights fees are huge. This is a like it strengthens the relationship with the network. They want us to put it over. What else were we meant to say? Mm. I oh, don't watch. It's all worked. Yeah. Oh way. It was the Wembley. It's going to be on sale for Christmas. No oh, way! It's like, you just when, say it in the broadcast. In July, like everybody else, this when tickets go on sale. So I was like, kind of the last guy to start uh, <laughs> taking these announcements seriously, or to stop taking them seriously. It's February now, so we're shopping for a new tree. Yeah. This, shop, is an, shop, shop, so I, this is an incredibly long-winded way of saying: at this point, it could be anything. Mm. At this point, it could be anything. Let your imagination run wild, if you wish, or lower your expectations, mm. like as far as possible. Look, this is probably something to do with the heavily rumoured, and you might be 
inclined to say all but confirmed signings of Kazuchika Okada and Mercedes Monet. And if you link it further to the Tony Khan tweet, which we've been mentioning of late, of 2024, so new 2021, well, where are the great gates? The double, double down. The double debut of Monet and Okada. Maybe the triple one if you count Osprey at Revolution because Osprey has finished up in February, if not now. Same with the Carter. They're both doing additional dates that yeah. aren't in the contract. Either way, by Revolution, you could get them both. You could get all three. It would be... Let's. Should we just work on the basis that it's to do with them three? I think it's going to be... He's going to book Osprey in a match next week. Okay. I think he preserves the surprise of those two when he books Osprey. And to be fair, like that... There is, that is For big. Dynamite. I don't think there's enough space. No, I, we, he says... I'm here to announce that a revolution, insert wrestler here. John Moxley. John Moxley. It wasn't me, someone on Twitter, and again, I'll start remembering these names or taking the screenshots, said, because I said on the preview yesterday, Moxley's winning a lot. Yeah. For what reason? Mm. And then someone in response to the preview, sorry, I forgot your name, or just didn't write it down, jot it down. What about the debuting Osprey at Revolution? Because he goes up against someone who's a winner. He just books it for the... The pop, you know, just says like you, you knew he was coming, but you didn't know when. Well, I'm here to tell you when. It's revolution. They've and already they've never done it as a singles either, have they? No. And they've already sort of done the confirmation of the CMLL relationship, so it probably won't be that correct. Well, no, because they're, they're running. They'll have had to be two matches deep, probably an by the time. The in- cooler than a, yeah. a an administrator yeah, coming yeah. out and saying we've signed a work every. Oh, well, I prefer it when I'm hopping the rail, <laughs> yeah. kicking ass. They <laughs> should run retribution. Like, well, good news. We've That's it. Yeah, we've good. signed them to contracts. <laughs> So working on the basis that it's to do with Osprey and or Okada mm. and or Money. 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 Oh. Careful. Quick one, just a quick one. Nothing happened. <laughs> just a tip. Uh, is it a good idea to do the double or triple debut? It's very Tony Khan to do that. He's alluded to the fact that he's going to do it with that 2021 tweet. Should he space these things out? Should it be a case of let your superstar, all-time great wrestler, A, debut a little bit before all-time superstar great B, so mm. that they each have the chance to register their presence, do something cool, spark conversation on their own terms, and then he can just play with the Carter toy in April. You know what I mean? Like the blue one off the rules around the Orton's return quite quickly. Yeah. Like realistically, how long do these things really last? I don't know but you should be milking them on their own terms a little bit. And I will say as well, I don't want money to be caught up in that. Oh, the men at the end. Um, money in the middle. Like, I don't want that. Well, like I th- Tony Storm celebrating and... Yeah. yeah. And then later it's all swallowed up by something that happens with the card or not. Like I would say... I think she's bigger. Well, that's the thing. She is. A, I think she's a bigger star than... Like, she's a bigger star. You know, if you order out, oh, Punk was wrestling, and that was his thing, but he'd, he'd done the comeback, you'd have to do Adam Cole, then she's, Brian Danielson. You had to have it that way around. She's got, obviously, by virtue of the fact that they haven't really done anything in North American TV, but she's got more bona fides yeah. as someone who's demonstrably capable of pulling numbers. Mm-hmm. So maybe she should get the red carpet treatment. I'm just saying that I know it's fun, Two, where they used to be one. <laughs> Two for the price of one. Oh, my fun's been doubled. It was great at all out. I don't necessarily think you have to do it again. That, to me, would indicate that you were, again, telling and not showing the audience, oh, it's great, guys, it's 2020, 2021 all over again. Shut up. Pubes. It's 2021, and the last two years, it's 2021 again. Shut up. It isn't. Show me that it's 2021 again. I would just feel like it's a a hollow callback to the glory days, basically. Mm. All out 2021, if in fact you do the double debut. Don't do it for doing its sake. Like, we'll see. And I'll tell you what, on that, again, if we are working under the presumption that it's a Osprey and a Carter, I know because these have been WWE leaning is your favorite. And that's fine for the past, like, one or two years under Triple H, right? And I, I'm with you on a Carter. Yeah. I don't you said it. yourself you wanted to see what that looks like. I just want to see more matches. I want to see him in the Fed. I just, I don't think that's a good place for him anyway. It's weird. That's for how exposed he's been and how many long matches he's worked and blah, 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 blah. blah. I'm personally <sighs> on a Carter on AEW. Osprey's a bit of a different proposition. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, this is Kazuchika Ricarda and Will Osprey in the space of a month. You're going to have to build the, co- the promotion around these two. If you want to extract the maximum value, mm-hmm. and you kind of do, 
You want those gates to be higher. You want to put them in matches every single week. By the way, they're not losing and it's ranked now. You have to build your promotion around these two names. So I'm sorry, Page and Swerve. I don't know what happens to you now. Work or shoot. Osprey was talking in that promo like he was working his way into a world title match at Wembley. Like whether or not he was doing that under, <laughs> yeah, yeah. under the sort of, that was a produced segment. It was like, go out there and talk you in the main event because we're going to start selling tickets. Or he was just shooting a shot. Either way, that's where certainly he sees what this job is. Yeah. Like I want a main event at Wembley yeah. and I want to be a world title contender and you probably should. I'm not an Osprey guy, but like most people that are or even they're just casual viewers of his work say he's the best in the world because each Ricardo has an equal argument. That's a good reason to have them Best both. of all time. Of all time. Of like, all like, time. That's a good reason to have them lead the charge and suddenly Swerve and Hangman are looking and going, oh, God, like, you have this, to. Is, this isn't ideal, but mm. these two have shown, I think that's all right. You know, it's the spirit of proper competition. Yeah, and it's not just to extract the value from these wrestlers. Mm. All-time greats, people consider each of them the very best ever. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I'd listen to the argument, even if I don't necessarily think they're quite up there. Like, you can't just put them on the, the regular rotation and not give them a superstar presentation and not build around them. Cause it's like, well, no one else will make the difference and you'll exacerbate the trust issues and all the memes of, all right, there's, we'll see him again in six weeks or maybe he'll f join a stable or feud with a stable or do a gauntlet. These two names have to really be treated specially and differently. Mm. Do I trust them to do it? I do not know. Mercedes Monet, I still think because it's been seemingly over the line for so long, not necessarily that they've always been promoting it, but like she sat there at Wembley Stadium. Mm. That's, that was a choice. And I know that then there was suddenly a bit of a seemingly a conversation. Open so back she's up. the best North American women's wrestler ever. Yeah, I like, think. Well, how, I think now I think you have to present her as, as I'd be very surprised if she was named in the announcement next week because everybody has assumed it. I'd, like, I think it's the worst thing you can do is just double down because it's like we've already started to adjust to the idea that she's going there. And you confirm it's like, oh. I think that there's, there's a pop worth preserving mm. there. How you do that, I don't know, like Tony Storm beats Diana Parazzo and is presented with a contract that says MM on it and she's about to swing from her IMA. And I'm like, it's not me, it's not me. Uh, Music hits. Uh, 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 uh. Wait. Uh. Oh my God. Da, hey. da, 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 she appears on the stage. Tremendous. Like, yeah. Thanks very much. Off the top of my head. But like, just <laughs> that, that, for example, where it's like, the surprise in the moment just creates this awesome buzz around her straight away because you've inadvertently sacrificed that a bit by showing her on the screens, having that one boss tease. The conversation has always been around it. You need to re, you need to find that buzz again. Naming her in an announcement, I don't think is the way to do mm. that. Contrast that to a Will Ospreay or a Kasich card. Osprey for me is it. Osprey is the announcement. He's already. He's told you he's coming, but it's just a, uh, not not yet, guys. Calm down, calm down, bruv. <laughs> that was weird. But like Tony Khan just formalizing it, yes. I think is like, people are buying the ass out of this revolution show. They're attending for Sting. The buy rate is going to be a good one, I think. That's like, going to be tremendous. It's feeling like it's going to be a stacked show. This is their opportunity to, it's not one of them years where they can out WrestleMania, WrestleMania, but it's really hard to get the conversation at this time of year and Revolution will grab that conversation by the throat if they continue to stack it the way they are. So just to conclude, in terms of the announcement, Tony Khan's going to need a bit of um, raise my tears <laughs> out the ass. Correct. <laughs> well, let us know your thoughts <laughs> uh, on what the announcement's going to be in the comment section below or on X at what culture WWE. You can let us know your thoughts on the whole show as well, of course. Uh, you can follow us on X at what culture WWE. Whilst you're there, follow all of us. You can follow Michael Hamflet at Michael Hamflet. And follow Michael Sidgwick at M Sidgwick. Follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow our brilliant producer at It's Adam Nicholson. As I said, follow us all at What Culture WWE. Make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Me and Sidge will be back tomorrow to preview AEW Collision. But for now, it's been the AEW Dynamite Review. My thanks to Hamlet Sidgwick. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon.